人からが気をといてねかきあげば、うりやまいとこんはやろは、ところはいまなききろな、やまとうたとはいてねば、いろがいとうのはてねいのいてば、あの。Uh, today we're going to、uh, read from Audrey's favorite book. And so、uh, we've got a few readings that we'd like to share today. But first of all, I'd like to、uh, invite Angeline to come and、uh, share with us first. That would be fantastic. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of God. Thank you. <coughs> well,、uh, as you know, Audrey was very interested and, and always invested into the generations, and so we thought it was appropriate today, the family thought it was appropriate today to have a youngster sing for us today. So we'd like to invite Angel to come and sing、uh, right now. That'd be fantastic. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, g u y s
quite simple. Right now, that'll be cool. Thank you.
Yeah, this time uh, I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Keith down to share a uh, message. Uh, well, it's a great privilege to be here today to share and um, to honour a wonderful woman. And I'm sure we're all here today because we acknowledge what a wonderful woman Audrey Phillips has been and the great impact that she's had on all of our lives. And we just want to say thank God for the impact that she's had on each of our lives. This is not a day that we've been looking forward to. In fact, from the day that Audrey was diagnosed uh, with her illness, she had literally hundreds of people <coughs> praying for her and believing and trusting God that she'd be healed and that she'd stay with us. And we prayed, I guess partly for selfish reasons, because we didn't want to lose her and because we wanted her to be here with us. But I just want to tell you this afternoon, Audrey's in a better place. She's received her healing. And she's in the presence of Jesus. And so we can come with a great confidence today knowing that Audrey is in the presence of Jesus. We're allowed to weep today. Everyone's allowed to weep. But please, don't weep for Audrey. Weep for yourself. Weep for the family. Weep for those who are left behind. But we know that Audrey right now is in the presence of Jesus. Looking down on this service, as we share together, probably with a big smile on her face as she looks at everyone and thinks about what's happening here. Um, but particularly, she is enjoying the presence of God. We can mourn, but we mourn only for our own loss, because we know that Audrey is in the presence of her Saviour. Akira, Richie, Nathan, Eli, Shekinah, we're here today to let you know that we care for you and we love you. And we just want you to know that there's the support of a family, of friends, who are caring for you and loving you at this time. Every one of us is here because all these had an impact on our lives. She's been a great mother, she's been a great wife, daughter, sister, friend. And we honour her for all that she's done. I think my first contact with Audrey was actually just down the road, not very far from here. I was actually working in the national office of the ACC and Sue and I just decided that we were moving to Alice Springs. And she walked into the office one day, I think she'd arranged with Sue to come. She walked into the office because she had something that she wanted us to take to Hikara because he was in Alice at the time and she was down here. And I can remember as she walked into the office, I've never seen her before, but she was huge in her presence. She just walked in and you knew that someone was there. And uh, she had an impact as she walked into the place. She brought joy and excitement. She was always bigger than life. And she made a tremendous impact. She lit the place up as she came into the place. And I didn't realise at the time that we were going to be working closely together <coughs> with Akira and with Audrey. But just a little while later, we were working together in Alice Springs. And Audrey, together with Akira, was showing us the great passion that she had for life and the passion she had for God. The drive that she had as she set about caring and ministering to the Indigenous people of Central Australia. And I just want to tell you this afternoon that Audrey and Akira have made a tremendous impact in Central Australia in their work with Indigenous people. Here today we have a number of people who have flown down from Alice Springs because they just appreciate Audrey and Akira so much. Uh, but particularly, I'd like to mention that we, we have with us Marty Samson, Martin Samson, who's an Aboriginal leader from Central Australia and uh, he's come down with some of the, the men and uh, he wanted to come to represent his people 
and to say how much they appreciate the work that both uh, Akara and Audrey have done. They've done a wonderful job. It hasn't always been easy, but you know the great thing about Audrey is that you can knock her down, but you can't knock her out. Uh, there were times when there was challenges, there were times when there were difficulties, but she would just wipe herself off and get up and she'd keep going and she'd keep on with the work. And um, together with Akara, as I say, they've done a fantastic job. I was thinking, what should I share on a day like this? What can I say on a day like this when we honour such a wonderful woman? I think the first thing that I have to say is that today we have a message of comfort. Jesus is here to comfort us. The Bible says Jesus was speaking and said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Akara, you're mourning today, but the great thing is there's a comfort. The comfort of the Holy Spirit is here for you. Jesus was spoken of in Isaiah chapter 61. Verses 1 to 3, where it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God. Listen to this. To comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. We're all feeling a loss. Hakira, the loss of his wife of 36 years. More than that though, a best friend who's been with him. I, I was chatting to him just this morning and, and he was saying that the last three months they've just been incessantly together. They've been together, probably spent more continuous time together in the last three months than ever. And he just so appreciates the fact that he's had that time. But this morning was for Richard, Nathan, Eli, Shekinah, they've lost a loving mother. Some have lost their sister, their daughter. All of us have lost a dear friend. But the truth is, we have a comfort. There's a comfort for those who are mourning. At Ikaro's request, I was actually with Ikaro and Audrey at the hospital when they received the diagnosis of the, the cancer that Audrey had. It was a real shock when the doctor actually spoke those words and, and spoke of the seriousness of the condition. But you know, I had the um, privilege of travelling home with Audrey in my car. My car happened to be closer to the door of the hospital than the car was, and so we said, well, you hop in my car, I'll drive you home, and the car followed. And um, I had the privilege of driving Audrey home. And you know, after the initial shock of hearing what the the doctors had said, immediately she bounced back. And the only thought she had as she was coming home was for her family. And she was saying, you know, we've just, I just, I trust in God, I don't have any fear. I know that God's in control, but I really feel for my family. She wasn't fearful, but she had concern for those who had to bear the pain if she passed away. There's comfort. And there's a comfort that's available today. I want to assure you that Jesus is here to comfort us. He wants to give you the comfort that Audrey no longer suffers. He wants you to know that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So we have a message of comfort. But you know one of the greatest comforts that we have comes out of the <laughs> fact that we also have confidence. We have a fantastic confidence as we are here this afternoon. You know, as we've been talking about this um, service, we've been talking more about a celebration than anything else because we're celebrating a fantastic life. And there's only one reason that we can celebrate, and that is that we know where Audrey is today. 
she's in the presence of the Lord. And so we have this great confidence as we consider the, the life of Audrey, an impacting life, a powerful life. You know, the last few weeks of her life, maybe the last few months of her life has been a time of suffering. Those that were close to her saw the physical devastation of what she went through. But just a couple of weeks ago, Sue and I were able to visit. And we left Audrey and Carlos home encouraged because Audrey was never going to think about herself. But she was talking about, well, how are things going in the church? Tell all of my people back there that we love them. Yeah, just keep going on for God, keep doing something. And there's this tremendous encouragement that was there. She was still glowing in her love for Jesus because she knew where she was going. She knew where she was going. How do Christians handle death? Simply because we have that confidence that there's going to be a resurrection. She hasn't gone, but we know that we're going to see her again. We're going to see her in the presence of Jesus. In John 11, verse 23, uh, we have Jesus speaking. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives in, believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? I ask you the question this afternoon, do you believe this? He that lives and believes in me shall never die. We have that confidence, that tremendous confidence that Audrey is in the presence of Jesus. And in John 6, 40, to, and this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For Audrey, her life here on earth is over, but it's only just beginning. She's now in a better place in the presence of her Saviour, and she's gone from life to life in the presence of God. And we rejoice in that great confidence that we have. So it's a great comfort to be here. We do have confidence, absolute confidence, that Audrey's in the presence of her Saviour. Maybe there's even a sense of relief in some ways that the suffering's over and there's no more pain. But with all of that, I think there's one more thing that Audrey would have me to share today, and that is the challenge. I think every time we have a service like this, there has to be a challenge. You see, we can talk about all the good things that Audrey did. We can think about the impact that she's had on so many lives. But the challenge to every one of us is, are we ready? We're reminded of our own frailty. And the fact that one day, someone's going to be talking about us in circumstances similar to this. The challenge is, are they going to be able to tell the truth? Or are they going to be fudging it a little bit to try to make it sound as if there's a hope when there's no evidence that that hope's there? The challenge is to be ready. It was an honour for me, a tremendous honour when Audrey spoke to me. In fact, it was as we were in the car on the way back from the hospital on that particular day that I spoke about before. We were travelling in the car and she said, you know, Keith, I'm believing that God's going to heal me. I'm just laying a hold of God and I'm going to keep believing. But she said, will you do my funeral for me? <laughs> and I said, hey, you know, you might be doing mine. Mine may be before yours. How do we know? None of us knows when our day's going to come. But you know, that was the thing about Audrey. She, she had tremendous faith, but at the same time, she was so pragmatic. She was a great organiser. In fact, probably one word that describes Audrey was that she was an organiser. 
She was always making sure things were in place and things were organized and things were happening. And she said, hey, would you speak at my funeral? I'd like you to do that. And I said, Audrey, if that's the way it works out, I'm very happy to do it. And you know, I was flying here from Alice Springs just yesterday. And as I was on the plane, I, was, I had my iPad open and I was just preparing and going over things to share. And it occurred to me that, in fact, I could almost hear Audrey speaking as I was on the plane. And the words that she was speaking were something like this. Tell them to get their lives right with God. <laughs> Tell them to make sure. And, and I could just hear it because I've heard her speaking in Kidman Street so many times. And she has that authority when she speaks. And she was saying, don't get to the end of life and realize that it's too late. That's what I felt that Audrey would have wanted me to say. Do it today. <clears throat> you know, one thing about Audrey is that you never left wondering what she really thinks. <laughs> she would always say what she thinks. And I think that I would be almost fearful of getting to heaven <laughs> if I didn't say this to you today. Be ready. The great challenge is We've got to live for God. Audrey's lived her life. She's lived a powerful life. It's shorter than most of us would have wanted it to have been. But it's not short on impact. It's not short on influence. It's not short on lives that have been changed. And the challenge to all of us is that we take up the challenge and we continue what Audrey has done. You see, Audrey's life has been a life of authority. It's been a life of power. It's been a great life. But Hebrews 9.27 says this, Just as a man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear the second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. And the challenge is, are we going to be waiting? Are we going to be expecting? Are we going to have lives that are right with God? I share at this funeral service with an incredible confidence. The question is, at our funeral service, Will the preacher be able to have the same confidence that we've run the race, we've finished the course, and we've achieved that which God destined and ordained for our lives? I pay tribute today to a wonderful, brave woman who lived a powerful life and has gone to her reward. Thank God for the life of Audrey Phillips. Thank you, uh, Pastor Keith, for those great words, words of uh, confidence today, words of comfort, and uh, words of life. And so uh, we, we thank you for coming over on behalf of the family and everyone here that you could come and share today. That was, that was great. Well, at this uh, time, I'd like to uh, invite um, Hoki and the children of Philip's family to come up and, uh, and share. So, um, if you guys can come up She 
she looked so beautiful and she was she was so happy for us and she um she was just she was all about life and about people and I think just looking at it today I see so many familiar faces and and some people don't even know and the great thing about that is it's just a person my mother was. She welcomed anyone and she could talk to anyone and the lives that she touched and the boundaries and the bridges that she crossed was um, pretty amazing. And like Pastor Keith was <coughs> saying, she, she challenged everyone and I know um, just all the walks of life and for everyone that's here today just to celebrate her life and what she stood for it was, it was true when we, when we got towards the end we, we sat down with mum and some family and we just asked her like what her legacy was and what she wanted to pass on to us and she just said one word and it was just, it was just Jesus she just said it's all she's ever been about it's just all she ever wanted for us and for us to be in the house and for all the seeds that she planted over the years and for just how strong she was. I think looking now where we are as, as a family and, and the journey that we've been through and the tough times that we've been through, whether it be as a family or individually, she was she was still just <coughs> just in the scene and praying and just and just knowing that you know everything's gonna be alright and right up to the to the day she passed, she was, she was still claiming the name of Jesus and she was always so kind and I just love her for who she was and for her life and for the opportunity just to be able to celebrate her life today and just, although it's hard to know that she's gone, it's just good to know that through her and through the seeds that she's planted that we can as a family and myself personally just carrying on the legacy through one message that she always believed in <coughs> and we always knew growing up was you know Jesus' life and it's just one message that she wanted us to continue on. I know through through us we can carry on and just play that torch and just keep running that race because you like like we all know like yeah if you weren't safe walking in, you would be leaving. And <laughs> mum was just that type of person. And she always has been, and she never, you know, she never wavered from that, and she never been shy of it. And I just thank you for all those that have traveled and all those whose lives she's touched. And it's just from us and all of us, just, just a comfort to know she's, she's not in pain anymore, she's in a better place. So. Hello, <clears throat> I'm Nathan Cara Phillips. I'm the middle son. I'm also the handsome one. <laughs> <I'm talented. laughs> I want to thank everyone for uh, helping to make today work from this, this venue and the, the, the love that you've shown to my family. I, I'm the only one that lives in New Zealand and uh, it was cool to, to see everything that everyone done from my dad and from my mom. Just organising this day and making it really cool. I appreciate it, so thank you. Um, also for the people that have looked after my dad. All the, uh, the brothers and the sisters that uh, went on his late night rubbish dumping trips <coughs> <laughs> to illegally dump them at McDonald's rubbish bins at no time. <laughs> for the people that would uh, go with Dad for his little uh, excursions to have coffee and then come back four hours later. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to my mum. I love you mum and it's an honour to be your son. It was a privilege. It 
it was a privilege to nurse you, to hold your hand, to massage your feet, to clean the house. And we will miss you, Mom. And we'll look after Dad. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Eli. I'm the youngest of the brothers. Let's be honest. <laughs> I am the good looking one. I was fine until Nathan started sharing. <laughs> I actually just wrote down what I was going to say when I was sitting down over here before that message from Keith. So I'm just going to open my iPhone. And my first note at the top was actually directed at you, Keith. I was sitting there and I have to say on behalf of our family, that message that you said on behalf of my mum was amazing. You didn't miss anything. And um, I love you and I love your wife. And I also want to extend... I'm going to break my back. <laughs> I also want to extend my love to... Everybody that has traveled from Alice Springs, can you please stand to your feet so we can acknowledge you and honor you? And um, that's the person that mum was. She was always about others and it wouldn't be right if I didn't acknowledge you and acknowledge Keith. And there's a few people that came into this auditorium that I hadn't seen, and um, I didn't actually know who they were, and they just passed by, and they, they told me their little stories. And um, I just want to thank you as well. Um, Mum's uh, wardrobe was full of colour and full of life, and I think Richie might have written on a Facebook message, it pretty much sums up who she was. She was larger than life. She was loud. And um, uh, I remember when we'd be in the elevators, I would see the same way that sometimes people act when I do things, and that's how I am with my mum. Like mum, people would walk into the, the, the lift, sorry, about 15 people on the lift. Mum didn't know any of them, and it would be silent. She's like, so everybody, how was everybody's day? <laughs> And I'll be sitting there like, I'm shush. Are you guys going to the buffet? It's really good. <laughs> my mum knew my passion and how much I loved Mariah Carey. And I did organise my ticket for Mariah Carey. Mum phoned me when I was at work. I don't know if you know this, Jason, but she phoned me when I was at work. And she goes, she, she sent me a message, actually, a text message, how she prayed for me. No word of a lie, two minutes after I received that text message, I got a phone call to say that I got a ticket to go to the concert. You know, she's a woman of breakthrough. And, um... <laughs> what's funny? Um, and there's a few verses um, that... Uh, <coughs> actually put together. Where are you, Zhaj? Because I had so much to say, but I had nothing to say. And then she gave me, um, actually, the slideshow that she put together um, for my mum's 50th. And I think they pretty much sum up my mum. So, <laughs> faith. I tell you for certain that if you have faith in me, you will do the same things that I'm doing. And you will do greater things. Family, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Radiance. I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful, and I know this very well. Breakthrough. Thanks be to God who always leads us into triumphant possession and love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength. Deuteronomy 6 5. There's one thing that I want to do before I pass it on is um, I know Mum will love this, and she's probably up there watching, and I don't feel. I can pass it on before I do a little dance for you, my beautiful mother. Where's Christina? Can you do a beatbox for me?
everybody. As you can see, I'm Maori. <laughs> I just wrote some things down here. You know, um, for more than a decade, I was blessed enough to have Audrey Phillips in my life. Far from the safety and surroundings of my biological mom, Audrey quickly became like a mother to me. My second mom, as I like to call her. She'd nurture, encourage, uplift, and at times correct me. Her faith and wisdom inspired and compelled me to live upright, to always aim for a life beyond the phrase of mediocrity. I'll never forget our long walks, our talks, and especially our laughs. I remember one time not long ago, um, after Jara disbanded, I needed someone to negotiate a performance fee for me. And um, <laughs> uh, Audrey and I was sitting um, in the kitchen waiting for this client to call, right? And um, the phone rings. We're both so scared, like freaking out. I was like, Audrey, can you answer? And she's like, do you answer? You answer. She picks up the phone. Hello, Audrey speaking. Like, after some pleasantries, it comes to the how much part of the conversation. Well. <laughs> um, that'll be uh, two, two, five, four. Oh, four. <laughs> and I mean, this is not really funny to you guys, but to us, it was hilarious because, yeah, it was just one of the many hilarious moments I've had with Audrey, and I'll never forget those things. And, you know, it's a memory we found funny since that happened, and even when things were pretty rough towards the end, I'd always talk to her pretty normally. I wouldn't walk like on eggshells towards her. I was like, hey, OG, how's it going? How's your day? And I'd always bring those jokes up, and she'd smile, you know? And um, seeing that smile made me really happy. I love you, OG. I miss you so much. You've been made new now. No more pain. Rest in the loving arms of God. I know you're cheering from us from heaven. Your South African refugee son will be. <laughs> oh, hi, uh, I'm Shapana. I'm the youngest and the only girl. But um, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for coming. And um, everyone that's like. And like everyone that's been on this journey with me and my family and my mom. Um, like my mom was a lot of uh, things to a lot of people, but um, to me she was like the best man I could have ever asked for. And um, um like I've been through a lot, and the one person to stand by me through everything was my mom. Like she really was the only one that knew exactly what to say, and exactly what to do to get through to me. And it's like she was some kind of reader or something. Like whenever I was in trouble or something was up, she would always know and come to my rescue straight away. Like she was like my biggest hero, and she was the type of woman that would never take no as an answer. And if she set her mind to something, she would always get it done. She is such an amazing person and such a powerful woman of God and if there's one key thing she told me in my whole life growing up, it was to always put um, Jesus oh, it was to always put Jesus in the center of everything I did do. And she definitely left a legacy. And I know with her passing, I felt it's my time to take on everything that she's taught me and to put it into action. And as much as I miss my mom so much, but um I know that her and my dad raised us, raised me and the boys so well. And that everything that they've put into our lives over the years, I know that we're going to be okay. But I love my mom so much. <laughs> she, yeah. I had a little baby flannel. <laughs> Already had these in her latter days. <laughs> 
Actually, now I'm the big baby, you see? But that's okay. That's okay. Well, this is my family. We've done this journey together. And what I can say is that we've done it well. And it doesn't end here, but only something just begun. But I want to give all glory and praise to God this afternoon. I could say a lot of things about my wife, but I won't. I think you've heard enough, and for those of you who knew her, well, you knew the type of a woman that she was. Perhaps another aspect about my wife was that she was a very profound woman. Now, if you were around her, it paid to take notice of what she would say because it was very prophetic, it was very godly, and it was life-changing. And she had that same impact upon my life. And so I was fortunate to be her husband, and so I cottoned on to that pretty early in the piece. And um, I knew if I had her approval, we're on the right track. And that's what God does. He gives you partners, not to put you down, but to build you up, to enhance the mandate that is upon your life. And she's not here today, but I look behind me and love my children, and I see the legacy that my mum, <laughs> that their mum passed on, will continue. And so um, let me just share a couple of verses and just a few things I've learned, and then we'll just continue with the program. When we started this journey, she sat with me and, and um, she said, Dear, I've got, uh, there's this verse, and I, and so she read it, and I'll read it to you this morning. And it's from Isaiah, and now it makes sense back then, you know, and this is this whole thing about the prophetic, you, get, you know, get this word and you, you sort of ponder upon it. Anyway, of the increase of his government and peace, there is no end. No. And so in life, we plant, in life there's a beginning, in life there's an end. But of the increase of his government and peace, there is no end. So when we're talking about the kingdom, this is the profanity, I mean profanity, the profoundness of what she was saying. <laughs> the kingdom of God, there is no end. It goes from glory, and Pastor Keith alluded to it this morning, to glory. And so for my wife, today she's with her maker, and what we see is this kingdom, the government, and his peace, there is no end. And so for my darling, she's just been ushered to be with her king, with her Lord, and with her Saviour. And then the verse goes on to say, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this, the zeal of the Lord. And that exemplifies who my wife is, the zeal of the Lord. And so we want to carry that zeal on, that passion that she had for the Lord, that um, enthusiasm. Simply, if I was to sum up, my darling wife, and I was um, a verse that would epitomize who she was to us as a family. For her to live was Christ, and to die was simply to gain. And so, excuse me, this evening, uh, this morning, this afternoon, I can stand before you with confidence because as we started this journey, we spoke about it. We said, darling, doesn't matter what happens. We're in a win-win situation. We won't lose. We're going to win either way. And so, um, you know, God is good. God is good. God is good. And certainly she never missed the opportunity to share the goodness of the Lord. And I see beautiful Betty there, one of our beautiful ladies from Alice Springs. She's my mum. And when I went up there, she used to look after me. And she'd keep me on my toes. She'd feed me. She'd pray for me. And it still hasn't stopped. Every day she would ring me. She would have verses for me. She would encourage me in the Lord. And um, it was every day, it was just what I needed in the Lord. And then my brother Martin and my brothers from Alice Springs, love yous. Love yous. Thank you for coming. Pastor Keith. I love Pastor Keith. He came up there and God brought the right man to the situation of the Palestinians. He brought backbone, he brought vision, and he gave us the environment in which we had the liberty to do what God had placed upon our lives. And so we're blessed, we are blessed people, we are blessed people. 
We are blessed people and I want to just give all the glory to God. So let me just share just a couple of lessons I've learned on my journey with my wife. The first is that God's grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. When we started this journey, I thought, how the heck am I going to do this? You know, my wife, she was an amazing woman. I thought, God, you know, like you need to bring some angels to look after her, to, to minister to her. And as I stood there, looking after my wife, God, he pointed the finger to me and he said, Nikairo, you are her angel. You love her, you care for her, you provide, you be her protector. And he said, my grace will be sufficient for you. Well, his grace certainly has been that this afternoon, and I thank God for that. Another lesson is the importance of the words we speak. The power of the spoken word, because God's word tells us that life and death is in the words that we speak. And I come to realize, as I was nurturing my wife, how easy it is to speak negativity over their lives. You don't mean to do it, but you do it. And so when she was sick and she was frail, you know, like I tried to turn it around and to make it positive. So every step she took, I wouldn't say, darling, you're weak, you need to try a wee bit harder. I said, um, let's just take a step for life. God, each step is for life. Just give her the strength to take another step. We would, we would just praise the Lord, we would thank God, just for little things like that. When she struggled to breathe, I would say, the breath of life come upon my wife. And so I endeavoured to turn the negativities of the death words into words of life. And um, it's something, it's heavenly language, I believe it's a language of heaven. But sometimes we miss it because we, we're too inclined to go down the negative path. And um, so I thank God for that and I will continue to speak life. And that's, that's what this journey was all about. It was about life. It was about life. And we can have life because I want to tell you this afternoon, people, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And I could stand here to my wife when she was sick and I could speak to that body in the name of Jesus and command the sickness to leave. I could speak to the mountain because God, he tells me in his word that in the name of Jesus, these names have to submit to his name. And so I learned how to speak with authority, not to be timid. We're in a battle, people. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. And up there with the indigenous people, you want to conquer, you want to overcome the enemy, you take the authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just thank God, because he's a great God. I can say a lot of other things I won't. But I remember my wife, before we left Alice Springs, here she goes, she had this other word. And so we went over to the service, even in the frailty, she said, dear, I need to go over to the service. So I took her over there, and then she, and I took her to the front of the, of the uh, up to the, up to the pulpit, the rostrum, and, and, um, what was upon her, the, the spirit, was that song. Indescribable, uncontainable. You placed the stars in the skies and you know them by name. You are an amazing God. All powerful, untamable, all struck. We fall on our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are an amazing God. And so she said, God, if you could place those stars in the sky, you can heal this frail body because you are an amazing God. And God, we just worship you because truly you are an amazing God. And we want to give you all praise. We want to give you all glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I'll call the boys up. One thing my mother loved is um, she's always surrounded by music, entertainment, she's a very entertaining person. So uh, I'm going to call the brothers up and yeah. we're going to sing a song.